The Cleveland Browns drop to the Cincinnati Bengals, and their season is over. If someone else on Monday or Tuesday tries to tell you otherwise, no, it is done, right? The Browns now are at 5-8. and eight. Best case scenario, they win out and go 9-8. and eight. And meanwhile, both the Bengals and the Ravens have nine wins. You would need them to lose out, and I don't see the wild card happening. That is it for this year. Not saying leave, but that is it for this season. After a 23-10 defeat in Cincinnati, Kevin Stefanski suffers his first loss to the Bungles in his head coaching career for the Cleveland Browns, and there are already people out on the streets calling for his job, calling for his head. So one word, if you had to sum it up, before we even dive really into the nuts and the bolts of this postgame show and talk about Deshaun Watson and Donovan Peoples-Jones and this defense and the penalties... How upset are you, word? How upset are you right now, right? I mean, where would you put it in one word? Furious, devastated. Let me know in the comment section below. You can even break the rule. Write a novel for all I care. But the stats from this game: Bengals 23, Joe Burrow 18 for 33, 239 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. I mean, once again, the Browns' defense actually played pretty well, in my opinion. For expectations, limiting the Bengals to 23 points, not too shabby. It was the penalties. Something we haven't seen much of this year. They've been a well-disciplined group. But that one drive with Tony Fields extending the, uh, extending the series for Cincinnati, running into the punter, roughing the kicker or whatever, and then you get the hands to the face on Isaiah Thomas, negating a Jadeveon Clowney sack, and then a 40-yard DPI from Denzel Ward. That right there killed the Browns because up to that point, the Bengals really had nothing going on offense, right? They were not doing much on their own whatsoever. It was the Browns' penalties enabling them. And that's where we go back to Kevin Stefanski because I'm not against Stefanski. I'm not in the camp of fire Stefanski, but sometimes it can get a bit frustrating that his answer to everything is just, let me bring my play sheet a little closer to my face. At some point, you got to be a head coach and grab your team by the horns and go, knock it the F off. The penalties are killing us right now. Not scheme up new creative ways. There's time and place. And that is Stefanski's biggest weakness. When things are bigger than play calling, he doesn't seem to have a good job of reeling things back in, right? Not letting it get away from him. Now to Sean Watson. Deshaun Watson did not play fantastic. Does he deserve to be benched for Jacoby Brissett? Absolutely not. How many times do we have to make the joke for 230 million reasons why? But more importantly, you don't get benched when you go 26 for 42, 276 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. I'm not confident that Jacoby Brissett would have garnished you a win today. I'm just not. Deshaun Watson... Threw a touchdown pass to Donovan Peoples-Jones. DPJ couldn't make the catch. That's the bottom line there. Was he perfect? No, he had some missed throws. It was one hell of an interception by Jesse Bates. He hasn't looked like the $230 million QB through eight quarters or the three first-round picks. I know that. It's also only been eight quarters, and he made a pretty good leap forward this week. It's unfortunate they took over a team that had zero slack, right? That had no margin for error. And today, they were not perfect. The penalties got to them. The offense stalled out one too many times. And the defense did all they could. They even picked off Joe Burrow, Deion Jones, to even give their team a fighting chance. One last breath. But it was not to be. We'll get to more of this postgame show in just a moment. But first, let me tell you guys about today's sponsor, Fetch. I want to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Fetch. Use the free Fetch app for iPhone or Android to scan your receipts to earn points and then turn those points into gift cards. Whether you're shopping at Target, Walmart, grocery shopping, or even your local mom and pop store, you can earn reward points by scanning your receipts with Fetch. You can also connect your Amazon account and your email to earn points on all your e-receipts. Use my link to, to, to download chatsports.com slash fetch and enter promo code chat 
at sign up for 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That's the equivalent of a free $5 gift card just to get started. As you accumulate points, you can click on Redeem in the Fetch app and choose from hundreds of stores and restaurants like Amazon, CVS, Starbucks to turn those points into gift cards. You can see how easy it is to use right there. The 5,000 bonus points, though, is only for a limited time. So get started now. Chatsports.com slash fetch and enter promo code chat. The link is also in the comments and the description of today's show. Some more post-game reactions and thoughts here. How about the ground game? How about Nick Chubb being outrushed by Joe Mixon? 96 yards to 34. Complete 180 of what happened in week eight when it was Chubb who went over 100 and Mixon who was held, what, under 40 yards, under 35 yards? Not the case today. Nick Chubb, whatever's happened, this offensive line, they've just fallen off a cliff since about week six or so. You know what I mean? I mean, Nick Chubb, for example, in weeks one through five, in five games, had more rushing yards and more rushing touchdowns in those five games than his next seven games now. Next eight games. You can include today still. Went from averaging six yards a pop to, I mean, a little over four. So that's just Nick Chubb, even when it's not a good day at the office. But today, there was nothing going on the ground. And Joe Mixon, 14 carries, 96 yards. His first game back from a concussion. And it's not like the Browns' defense was as bad as it was against, like, the Falcons on the ground. But there were moments where Mixon rattled off 10, 12-yard carries. Just didn't get that from the Browns, right? Referees, by the way, sucked. How about that one Nick Chubb run in the fourth quarter? I remember saying, like, first down Cleveland, and it was third and one. I'm like, what are we doing here? So the referees kind of sucked on both sides. Shout out to Jerome Boger. Um, but what do you think the biggest need is for the Browns? Because now the conversation will begin to change, and it will start to look into the offseason. Because while they're not mathematically eliminated, in my eyes they are. You have to win out and you need other teams to lose out. You will be eliminated next week, probably. So with that being said, defensive line. I don't think Clowney, who by the way, I thought played his best game, maybe all season long. I don't think he's coming back next year. I don't see Taven Bryan returning. And I don't see Jordan Elliott holding on to his starting role. Perion Winfrey had a sack, if not taken away from Isaiah Thomas' penalty. Good to see Winfrey start to rev, rev up his engines a bit. But I think defensive line has to be the focal point for the Browns going into the offseason, okay? I, I just think it's an absolute must, okay? So, we have a super chat coming in from HNT. We'll throw that on screen in just a moment. Uh, we got some more stats to get to, though, to keep you guys, you know, plugged in on everything going on. Let's start with DPJ, though. DPJ had, in my opinion, up until the end there, yeah, you know the targets. The computer didn't pull correctly. Sorry about that. Eight, ra eight grabs, 114 yards. Like, Donovan Peoples-Jones, up until the drop in the end zone, was really establishing himself as a volume receiver, right? Someone you can go to over the middle of the field. Someone you can go to on third and eight. That hadn't really been him up until the last couple of weeks. So it was so awesome to see him take that bigger step as a receiver and not just be... A big play guy down the sideline. But he has to make that catch in the end zone. And then I go back to that catch. Back up a bit. How about the play call? Not crazy. About fourth and goal from the six. Doing a fade with Deshaun Watson at quarterback. Why not have him, I don't know, extend the play a little bit, right? Get the defense moving side to side. Force someone to commit to him. Find a Joku in the end zone. Instead, you do a play call that... Jacoby Brissett could have done. Just snap, throw. Wasn't crazy about that play call. Catch has to be made, but I would like to have gone back in time and did a whole different play altogether. Dr. No, also Browns need to hire a better play caller. Kevin Stefanski is not relinquishing play calling duties. He's not at that point. Now, the rest of the games this season will be interesting to see how much has to change this offseason. Because losing on the road to Cincinnati is not really making a good case to tear it all down. But if you start to stumble with the Saints and the Commanders and Tyler Huntley and the Ravens at home next week, then we might see a bit of a louder drum beating 
for Stefanski giving up play calling. But I kind of go back to, guys, if you take away Kevin Stefanski's play calling, that's his best thing. Like, that's his, right, his forte, the best thing he brings to the table. If he's not calling plays, what is he doing? Because it's sure as hell not rallying the troops on the sideline. That's his biggest weakness. HNT game summary, hashtag penalties. Yeah, penalties were awful for the Browns. Double-digit penalties. Worst time to have the worst disciplined game of the season. In a must-win scenario, they pee down their leg. Bummer to see. Dr. No, the Browns' main, consistent, the main problem is inconsistency. I'd agree with that. That, and this has just been a theme for about the last two years. Never complimentary football on offense or defense. I'm not asking for it all 18 weeks, all 17 games. But today, when the defense gives the offense a chance, something we haven't seen much all year, the offense puts up 10 points, right? And when it's the offense rocking and rolling, it's the defense giving up 30-plus points. So we'd love to get these two groups synchronized for once. All right, last question we'll ask, and then we'll let you guys try and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Are you concerned with Watson? I'm not. I'm really not. Second game, missed some throws. The Amari Cooper at the end was a little bit off the target, but we have seen much worse, right? This was not a train wreck. Three interceptions, missing guys wide open in the end zone. He had some great plays, did some fantastic stuff with his feet. We are beginning to see, hey, once this train gets rolling, it's going to be close to unstoppable. It's just about the penalties not derailing it and getting it all together and everyone on the same page. Appreciate all of you guys for tuning in, subscribing. If you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Click that big red button and subscribe for more Browns YouTube content.